Let me tell you the story of how I stumbled backwards into building this modular ruin tower. It started way back when I was still kind of young and kind of innocent. Way back in the November of 23. I had set a one-shot dungeon crafting challenge, as was the custom at the time. So I decided to build the tower from the Beast of Hamlin, one of the starter adventures from uh, the Four Horsemen. Then the more time Facebook group threw down a terrain challenge, so I decided to make it a bit more derelict to make it fit. Then Cleric's Creations started a vertical terrain challenge, and since the tower fit the build that's how I ended up trying to build something that fit the criteria of three different challenges. Oh the hubris. I wanted a building with a playable interior that had some nice chunky walls. I've seen way too many tabletop fortifications with tin walls, and while that is technically better for the table, I see real world fortifications pretty regularly, so it always kind of stands out to me. To do this I started with some foam blocks, each 12 by 10 by 1 cm, which I would double up to have 2 cm of thickness before adding bricks. The reason I went for two 1 cm thick blocks rather than a single 2 cm thick block was that I planned to have arches on all the interior walls. This way I could cut arches into one block and lightly glue it on top of the other. I made a card template for this and used that to cut the pieces out on the hot wire cutter. Then I glued them to the solid pieces. I would be beveling the sides later, so I used more glue on the top and less on the sides. I also made a template for the windows, and cut those out too. The bottom edge of the window is 15mm from the floor, perfect for 28mm scale minis on a regular base. For the door I just used a slightly larger version of the window template. The tower would obviously need stairs, otherwise most of the volume would be unusable. I gave up on the idea of having playable stairs, because then each flight would have to be pretty long to uh, accommodate the bases. Instead, I compromised by putting a landing halfway up each flight. Not exact, but close enough for me. The stairs themselves were cut freehand, each thread around 5mm in depth. This would allow the bricks to sit in them. I wasn't too worried about precision, because any imperfections just add to the direct look. For the stairs in the upper floor, I decided to cut some extra arches into the staircase. The idea was to have one small arch under the first flight, and a second larger one under the landing and the second flight. So I could have the stairs on top of each other, and miniatures coming up from the ground floor would emerge from under the arch. That was the plan at least. In the first of several ill-conceived decisions, I cut all the arches horizontally, which meant that there wouldn't be enough clearance. I should have cut the arch along the stairs diagonally, but I only realized that when I was gluing everything up and it was far too late. To glue the stairs to the walls, I had to cut up some space into the arches. This will all be covered in bricks, so there is no need to follow the exact profile of the stairs. The lower flight and the landing go on one wall, and the upper flight goes on the other wall. My plan was to have an octagonal tower, so once I had the uh, wall sections ready, I set the hot wire to an angle of 22.5 degrees. I couldn't find my protractor though, so I tried to get all the angles via geometry, and started cutting. Spoiler alert, I messed up the angle, and when I was test fitting the pieces, I found that I had made a septagon, not an octagon. Oh well, now my tower was more magical. With the body of the tower glued together, it was time to cut some bits off. Before I could do that though, I glued some strips of foam into the cuts I had made for the windows, as the bottom of the walls would fall off otherwise, and started off a couple of courses of bricks to reinforce them. Then I got cutting. The gaps give players limited access to the miniatures inside, and because this is more time, you don't need to worry about structural integrity. These are magical ruins, so pretty much anything goes. Next, I started the soul-destroying task of laying the bricks. This is a pretty slow process, though it's not terribly complicated. Laying down a thick layer of PVA glue lets you slide the bricks around for a while, so you can make some adjustments. Just make sure to offset each row and leave a little space between each brick. 
you don't need to be exact and a few variations will help sell the look later. The corners will look a bit messed up right now, but we will be fixing them before painting up. To make the top of the arches, door and windows, I glued bricks along the top. It's not a perfect curve, but it's close enough to give the illusion of being so. I did double arches for most of the windows, but not all of them as I got into a flow and uh, forgot. The bricks in the horizontal courses won't match up to the curves, so I cut some bricks up at an angle and used these to close the spaces. The walls within the arches were built up like any other wall. Again, I sliced up some uh, bricks so they would fit better in the arch. To hide the fact that the uh, bricks along the top aren't interlocking, I laid a second arch on the inside, which I think also makes it look slightly more interesting. Now, the bricks on these sides of the arches interlock, but uh, with the doors and windows you're going to get these bricks poking out. Just trim them flush to the sides of the opening. The stairs were built off the walls. There were a couple of places that were a bit awkward to reach, but otherwise it's the exact same process. Since we have broken edges, I wanted to show some of the infill of the wall. To do this, I cut a bunch of uh, bricks at an angle matching the brick, and glued them in along the same courses as the ones in the face of the wall. In real masonry, there would be a whole lot more going on here, but in my opinion this is just fine for a model building for gaming. Next up, I needed floors. I started by using the uh, tops of the sections to uh, cut some 5x5mm beams of foam. Then glued in more beams between them to uh, form supports for the planks. To make planks, I textured some foam with a pencil. Just pull the pencil through several times, always in the same direction. Then slice off a 3mm thick sheet of textured foam and repeat a few times. When you have a few sheets, slice them up into 10mm wide planks along the lines of the texture. I would have liked to use wooden stair sticks for this, but uh, with the time constraints I felt this would be faster than trimming the sticks. And though it started out pretty flimsy, once it is sealed and varnished, this floor can easily take the weight of several miniatures. I glued the planks at an offset, leaving a gap for the stairs. Each plank rests on three beams, and starts and ends halfway across a beam. Once all the planks were in place, I trimmed off the sides and cut up a hole in the middle. At this point I noticed I had made a mistake with one area which left it unsupported, making it very fragile. I solved this by gluing some of the uh, broken plank pieces to bridge it. We do make mistakes here, but we turn them into texture. About now I also realized that it didn't make a whole lot of sense to have a stone staircase resting on planks. But I was committed now, so hey, magic. I might make a stone floor at a later stage, but right now I had to focus on getting it done. At this point I wanted to paint up what I had. I still needed to build a roof, but the playable sections were ready to go, so I thought I'd get them out of the way first. Before I could paint them though, I needed to uh, rub my balls over the bricks. My foil balls, that is. I went over the bricks with the foil balls to rub them up. Most of this will be covered up soon, but enough of it will stay visible to make it worth it. I paid special attention to the corners, crushing them in so that the blocks that were sticking out blended back into the walls. After texturing the bricks, I cut some 2mm thick panels and glued them into the windows to serve as window sills, and then some 1cm wide strips to go into the doors and windows as frames. 2mm is thin enough to flex easily, so it just curves along the foam. Since I was going to be using Gretel can varnish later, I coated everything with PVA and black paint. You can skip this if you're using an airbrush. I was considering painting this brown so I could make jokes about what a pain in the ass this build was to push out, but I decided to go with a colder stone color. To start off the stones, I painted them blue-grey. I also painted the frames and the sills white before with blending some marble texture on them. Now, this is fairly easy as long as you work fast. Drop some black paint on them and get some white paint on your brush, and squiggle it on the piece. The paint will blend in some places leaving grey while the white and the black will still stand in a few places, and the whole thing looks like marble veins. I think I should have done this at a later stage though, 
because I did get some stuff from them later. But hey, it's a ruined building, so I don't think they're cleaning it regularly. At this point, I varnished the whole thing. This stops water from uh, the following stages from getting into the glue joints and deactivating the PVA. Next, I mixed up some polyfiller and started rubbing it into the walls, using a damp brush to uh, work it into the corners. You want to get as much of it as possible into the gaps between the bricks, and as little as possible on the faces. But don't worry too much about it. The filler dried overnight, then I came in the next day with a Mars brown wash which went over absolutely everything. I prefer this to black wash for large areas as it gives a richer color in the end. I left this to dry completely, then repeated with a Payne's grey wash. This looks very blue when it's wet, but it dries a very nice uh, bluish grey color. The washes can take a while to dry, but they're mostly water, so I left them in front of my only fan, and they dried up pretty quickly. To finish off the stones, I gave them a very light dry brush of carnation pink, from top to bottom. Usually I use ivory for this, but I ran out and this is close enough. The key thing here is not to use pure white, as that's far too strong for a natural highlight. The floors were painted Mars Brown, and the top surface was base coated with a mix of Mars Brown and Rose Hiena. I then washed it with uh, a mix of Mars Brown and Black, and then dry brushed it several times with uh, Grey Green. After that it was off to a couple of layers of uh, clear coat varnish. At this point, the deadline for the more time challenge was coming up, so I was thinking of leaving the roof out, since it's not a playable area anyway. However, the organizers announced an extension of a week, which meant I could probably squeak it in. I started out by making the structure to hold up the roof out of 5mm sticks of foam. Each section has four parts. One end is cut square, and the other ends are cut at an angle. The long diagonal is cut at 45 degrees, and the others are at 22.5 degrees. Since the sticks are 5mm wide, you can find this pretty easily by putting the stick up against a 1cm square, and cutting at the point where the stick meets the bottom edge. For most part, it's easiest to work with longer pieces, and then trim them when they're together. I glued these pieces together with two sticks each, cut at angles, then I primed them and then started adding planks, same as I did with the floors. Then, because I am clearly incapable of learning from my mistakes, I started gluing individual shingles. These were made in the same way as the planks, just cut smaller and uh, 1 mm thick. Since I didn't quite like how the floors had turned out, I tried a different recipe here. I primed the roof with Mars Black, which is a really, really dark brown, and PVA glue. Then, I made a mix of 3 parts Rosiana, one part burnt amber and one part titanium white, which I overbrushed on. Next, I took some summer green paint diluted with water and stippled it here and there on the roof. I finished off by adding some light grey to the overbrush mix and dry brushed that on. The process is a lot faster than the one I used for the floors and I think it turned out a lot better. With the roof done, I was able to submit this for the Mordheim group challenge. I also wrote a Mordheim scenario to go along with this, which you can find linked below. Also linked below, you will find links to other videos in Cleric's Creations Vertical Terrain Challenge. The tower build is over 40cm tall, so that fits the criteria. Nice. At the time of the making of this video, I haven't watched all the other videos in the challenge yet, but those I have seen have been pretty cool. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Right now, I am just enjoying the feeling of not gluing more bricks together, but I'll probably be uh, back at it before long. 
Catch you around then. Have a great year. Bye.